Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And we're still in Trofinet's month of memes. It's a very long month, so we're still going with some meme decks. And today we're going to be heading back into Squiatel, but this time we're going to be playing Elves with a hint of Precision Strike and uh, a lot of bombs. A hell of a lot of bombs. So uh, let's check out the Mad Striker Squirrels. So the Mad Striker Squirrels deck is a Squirtel Precision Strike deck that utilizes both the Elven Archetype and the Maddock package, the bomb package basically. So we're going to be trying to hit our enemies by a shitload of damage. Uh, Kind of similar to our Siege Engine Overload from last time. But uh, in this deck we also have a lot of swarming available to us. Where we're trying to uh, build a swarm of elves. All while we're also dealing a lot of damage. There's also a tiny bit of movement. Uh, I think these four cards are especially cards that you can swap out for something else. But I think um, this definitely works in certain situations. But you can also use for example uh, Bountiful Harvest and uh, some uh, four provision cards instead. Instead of uh, this package. But we'll be going through each and every single card in detail one by one but if you know what all these cards do again this is the deck list you can find it in the link in the description to the play gwent website where you can import the entire deck as usual to your own game and uh, don't forget to upload it over there but you can also skip to the example matches if you don't want to see the entire explanation using the timeline down below but for everybody still with me in this section let's go through each and every single card so first off, we're using Precision Strike, so we definitely need two Broccolon Sentinels since the ability actually spawns a Broccolon Sentinel. So if we manage to keep these two out of our hands, then we spawn all three of them in one go. So two power, four provisions, on deploy, damage an enemy unit by two. And if you kill something with that two damage, you summon all copies of this unit from the deck to the same row as the first one you played. So very good way of thinning your deck if you use your ability early. And otherwise it's just a nice, um, that is 11 points in total. So three hits with precision strike, then the two points from the Brooklyn Sentinel, the two damage, and four more from the other Brooklyn Sentinels coming onto the field. Next up is a double Elven Sword Master, so four power, four provisions, and when she is on the melee row, you can damage an enemy unit by one every two turns but if you play an elf you reduce the cooldown by one so you can play um, an elf and then just use that one ability uh, that one damage tick again so pretty simple engine card next up we have a single vry hat sapper just to have a uh, purify option so on the ploy you purify an allied unit but if you have an elf you can also purify your opponent's units so getting rid of the fender and stuff like that. Then we have our first bomb. So we have Maddock. Maddock will jump out of the deck or the graveyard whenever you play a bomb. So Red Haze is our first bomb. Choose an enemy unit and then damage one adjacent enemy unit by its power. So if you have a uh, strong enemy unit on the board with an even stronger right next to it, you can kill it or you can just choose the other way around depending on what you want to do. Now we have Dancing Star. Dancing Star damages an enemy unit by three, but if you kill it, you damage the unit to the right by one less. And that keeps going. I don't know why the card doesn't actually um, explicitly state this, but if you kill the next unit by, uh, if you kill the next unit with the two damage, you do another bit of damage on the last unit. Now we have the Dimeridium Bomb, damage a unit by four and give it a Veil. Um, the Veil is usually not that useful, Aside from maybe blocking uh, something like putting Vitality on a Hammer Triad. Um, but other than that, you just going to use the 4 damage to kill something. Then we have the Cat Witcher, as I said before. These are the cards that you can technically switch out, but I do like a little bit of movement support in this deck. So the Cat Witcher, 4 power for 5 provisions, and at the end of your turn, you move self to the other row and damage a random enemy unit on the opposite row by 1. If you're at Adrenaline 3, the damage is increased to 2. Um, which can be quite significant. So if you manage to play him at the uh, the exact moment that you hit Adrenaline 3 and he stays alive, that means that you get 4 times 2 damage. So that's another 8 points on top of the 4 you already have. And then to bolster that a little bit and to continue, of course, our Elven archetype, we have the Dolblad on our Sentry in this deck as well. 4 power and 1 armor. And whenever an allied unit moves, you boost it by 1 if you put him on the ranged row. 
If you put them on the melee row, then you just damage every moving enemy by one. But usually we're going to be going for the ranged row. Now we have a double Northern Wind, one of the stronger bombs in the deck. So four power, uh, well, five provisions and you deal four damage to an enemy unit. And if you kill it, you actually banish it. So good to permanently take out enemy Maddox and stuff like that to permanently move them from the battlefield. Now we have Vanadane. Vanadane is a card that I rarely used before this, but Vanadane is actually very, very powerful. So six power for seven provisions, and on the ball you move up to two cards from your hand to the bottom of your deck, and you add Waylay to your hand for each card moved that way. Whenever you play Waylay, you spawn an Elven Deadeye on his row, meaning that you double up on the Elven Deadeyes for each Waylay that you play. Um, you don't need to kill anything with the waylay because of course you waylay is 3 damage and when you kill something with that 3 damage you spawn an Elven Dada in a random row. But if you don't kill it but you still have Vanadane on the field, Vanadane will still spawn an Elven Dada. So basically giving you 3 points every single time you do this. If you play Vanadane at the end of your scenario card then you'll get a waylay immediately giving Vanadane 9 points for 7 guaranteed. So again, a very, very good card that can uh, bolster your Elven Swarm really, really quickly. On top of that, the fact that you move two cards from your hand to your deck and not discard those cards also means that, they, that you can put the three cards that we don't want to have in our hands back into the deck in case you really need to, in case you had some trouble mulliganing them. So the Procolon Sentinels, and I think it's our next card. No, it is not. But I'll skip to it regardless. So there we go. Eloren is a 5 power elf that moves on the field from your deck on the melee bro. If you control 5 or more elves at the end of your turn. So this card is also another one that you don't want to have in your hand. But you can put it back into the deck with Vanadane if it happens to happen. Then we skipped over him but Isengrim Volt Tiagna. 4 power for 8 provisions and on deploy you boost all other allied elves by one so very good for our elven swarm and whenever you play an elf afterwards you boost himself by one instead so uh, very good just to bolster the entire swarm that's going to be on the field then we're still striker elves so we need some elves that also do damage to reveal is perfect for that so five power for eight provisions and on deploy you either damage enemy units at the both well both ends of the row by two so four damage in total or damage all units on an enemy row by one, depending on where you put her. Um, so very versatile card, also allows you to take down a few enemy units to just be in range of being killed by a bomb or something like that. So very, very handy card indeed. Then Elias. Elias is again focusing on the Elven Swarm. So six power for nine provisions and on deploy, you destroy an allied unit, preferably of course of one power, and then spawn two Elven Deadeyes in this row. If you play them the most efficient way possible, this is 11 points for 9 power, but of course in 3 bodies. So very, very good card that can quickly uh, increase your swarm potential. And now we have the bit of a meme card, Geralt Igni is in here uh, just because of the fact that we have a lot of board control with Precision Strike and a lot of the units that we have in this deck as well. So we can perfectly set up Geralt Igni for some big whammy. So 2 power for 10 provisions if you don't know what this card does, but uh, if you've been playing Gwen for a long time then you'll recognize this as one of the mainstays. On deploy you destroy the highest power units on an enemy row with a total of 35 or more power. Or if it's the first action in your turn, you can destroy the highest power units on an enemy with a total of 20 or more power. So if you face a very greedy deck, then you can even set up whatever you want beforehand, because 35 is enough to guarantee the deployment of this ability. Then we have Maddox himself. Maddox is a Witcher, so not an Elf, sadly, but for 3 power, he uh, pops out of the deck or out of the graveyard whenever you play a bomb. It, he goes to a random allied row with an order ability where he spawns Cataclysm for one turn on the opposite row and then destroys himself. So basically you turn his 3 power into 3 random damage on the opposite, opposite row. And then of course if you play another bomb he comes back immediately. So basically giving you 3 points on top of every bomb that you play which is uh, very very juicy. Then of course Gezras, we have actually kind of by accident have a lot of witches in this deck as well, but Gezras of Leda, 5 power for 12 provisions, and uh, this witcher also moves from uh, the row 
back and forth between the melee and the ranged row. Every time he does this, if you are at Adrenaline 3, you boost all your units if you go to the ranged row, or you boost all your opponent's units on their melee row if you go to the melee row. If you're not at Adrenaline, then you only uh, boost one or damage one by one. So it's a, a very good card by the end of the round, and of course works well with the Dolblatana sentries on top of all of that. And now we have Vernociel. Vernociel is probably the most important elf in this deck, so 5 power for 12 provisions. And on deploy, you either spawn two elven dead eyes if you put it on the range row, giving you 11 points, but also a bit of swarm potential. But if you have a lot of elven dead eyes because of Vanadane, because of your scenario card, you can also put her on the melee row instead. And then she will not spawn elven dead eyes, but will damage a random enemy unit by two for each and every single elven allied. Dead eye. That was a lot of words to each other, but the, for each elven dead eye on your side of the board. So if you have six of them, this is 12 damage on top of the five power body. Very, very powerful. And then, of course, we talked about it a few times already. We also have the scenario card here, Fame Death. Um, of course, progresses whenever you play an elf. Spawns of Renosil's Commando on this row first, so which boosts herself by one as long as you have elven uh, units on the board, only elven units on the board by the end of the turn. Then you spawn two more Elven Dead Eyes, and then you play Waylay. So this is the Waylay that will trigger if you play Vanadane as your second Elf after the scenario card has been played. Um, very, very powerful combo in one go. Our stratagem is the Enshade Saber, allowing you to play a Squiatel Neophyte, which is a two power Elf that also spawns a base copy of the unit on the other row. So four power uh, between two units at the start, and on order you can also transform an allied elf into an elven dead out, so possibly giving you two more points for both of them. Um, so maximum ceiling is eight points for this card, but uh, usually it's gonna be just six. And of course, this gives you a few elves to get your swarm going in the first round as well. And then our leader ability is Precision Strike, so an order ability where you damage unit by one, uh, you can do that three times. And when you use your final charge, you immediately automatically play a Broccolon Sentinel, which uh, if you kill something with the two damage, will pull all the Broccolon Sentinels out of our deck. So that is definitely what we want to do. So that's all the cards in the deck. Again, you can find the complete deck in the uh, link to the Plaguement website in the description, so you can check it out over there. But uh, let's not wait any longer and head into a few example matches. And our next match is against Line Pockets. That might actually be in our favor. We definitely have the firepower to counter Line Pockets. So this is actually looking pretty good. Um, I do have a lot of gold cards here. I'm going to get rid of Geralt Igni for now, and maybe even Gezraz. Gezraz might be a bit too big here as a start, so let's get rid of Gezraz and we get the Swordmaster. So the Swordmaster is a pretty good way to start a match, since we just set up that engine to start uh, rocking. And then we just get Sewer Raiders as the start, so we don't really need to react to anything just yet, so let's just put the Swordmaster down. And see how far we get with this. So the goal of this deck is usually to try and be as aggressive as possible. So we take out our opponent's best options as soon as possible. So we get a double poison here through the Blindheim card. Um, and I think that's just an easy way for us to take that out. So we can take out Gellert Blindheim with a Northern Wind here. There we go, and that spawns um, Madoc on the board, so we have three points of damage on that back row in a minute as well. Now we got the Tunnel Drill, but the Tunnel Drill will not be doing anything, because I'm, that was really early for a Tunnel Drill. I'm gonna put Madoc down, um, and then I can hit the Tunnel Drill just twice with Precision Strike, because uh, Tunnel Drill is a really big threat, so and then just do it like this so we get the uh, mad oak back immediately and that kind of flips us to equal points in one go aside from the fact that our opponent has nine coins in the back so next up we get ooh, a lot of dwarves in one go yeah I, I think i get the point damn that was a bit much um i can actually put the cat witcher down now if i put them on the melee row it can just start flipping back and forth um, I can hit the course blacksmith and then use. Um, do I use Madoc? 
Ah, I can as well use Maddox. They're just gonna hit that back row there. And that's the Cat Witcher down. So it seems like our opponent is really, really pushing the aggressive hand <laughs> angle as well. So we're not going to be able to do much here. Uh, I think I might as well uh, pause. Because um, otherwise we won't be able to get over that point difference. So there we go, pausing. So our next hand is actually pretty good. Aside from, of course, the fact that we don't want to see that Brokilon Sentinel here. Um, and since well, we do have kind of a movement option here. Red Haze is also good, and I don't think we'll be needing a Purify unless we want to Purify our own side, but our units aren't that big, so we might as well get rid of that. There we go. And then we get the Casino Bouncers, which is going to be just that, Casino Bouncers. So let's just put another Elven Swordsmaster on the field. There we go. And then we can take the second round after our opponent most likely passes. Yeah, there we go. Our opponent passes, so we can now just use the... Time Meridian Bomb on the Casino Bouncers. And let's add another hit just to add insult to injury. There we go. Second round for us. Let's head into the most important rounds. But a pretty gold-filled hand, if I might, might say so. Okay, so Elrin we definitely don't want. But everything else seems to be looking A-OK. -okay. So Igni is even back. Um, Igni might actually be really good against um, Cleaver. So I'm going to keep it exactly like this. Um, do I immediately go with the scenario? I think that might actually be the better option here. Um, so just feign death immediately. If it survives, it survives. If we get Cruelty Heatwave, then it's sad. But yeah, it is what it is. And there we go. Cruelty Heatwave on top of it immediately. Um, I think now might actually be a pretty good time to use Vanadane. So if I can use Vanadane, uh, I can put the um, the two bomb cards back into the deck because I won't really need uh, Madoc anymore, and we get two Waylays in return. So even though Vanadane might now die, which uh, is not going to happen, we do have the extra Waylays, um, and I'm really, really looking for what I can use now. So if I use my leader ability, I'm going to be summoning the Brokilon Sentinels. Um, so I think I'm just going to use Waylay on that um, single Flaming Rose Footman now. Even though I'm not going to get the extra uh, Deadeye, it's still going to be 6 points. So better than nothing. There we go. And then we get Bloody Good Friends, which is going to start spreading out the damage. That's not too bad at the moment. Um... I could now use Elias and get rid of that one Elven that I in return for... Because that Bleeding is going to take down, it's only a 2 power unit anymore. Um, so there we go, Elias onto that Elven that I and get it being us a nice extra batch of dead eyes. And there we have Elrin as well, so another 5 points on top of all of that. Bleeding is being spread out, we get Swindle. And more Bleeding is being spread out, that is... Kind of weird. Um, but now I am actually in range for the leader ability. Uh, so I'm just going to use the Brokilon Sentinels in the back on the Flaming Rose Footman. And then we're going to use Waylay on the Bloody Good Friends to get another double Deadeye on the board. So pretty good swarm even though we didn't get the scenario card played out completely. So now since the board is clean we actually have a... Um, well clean slate to kill whatever our opponents might actually toss at us. Um, so that's two times, three times. We're just gonna just gonna do that. Oh, they're gonna kill something else. Are they gonna kill the Brooklyn Sentinels, are they? Okay. Fair enough, I suppose. Um, I'm not gonna use Vernilciol aggressively this time, because I actually want to give my opponent some uh, points to generate, because uh, it's not looking good at the moment. So let's just use Vernilciol in the back. That will cause the Commando to now keep boosting, even though there's a Dryad on the field. Because when Vernilciol is on the field, they ignore the, um, the condition that you only need Elves on the board. Scorch! Oof! Oof! Okay. Fair enough. Um, that was sad. So let's use Gazgaz now. Gazgaz is only going to be 8 because I'm assuming they'll uh, be able to kill that rather quickly. 
So there we go, Gazadel's going down to the damage as expected. Uh, and that's about it. I'm gonna add another elf here, just because I can. Then we got Siki Ruven maximizing the um, the coins there, Jesus Christ. Yeah, Igni might actually be useless now. So I'm gonna put Isengrim down first, but I'm pretty sure that Igni is not gonna be able to help here. Although, we do get Cleaver. Cleaver is shaking down, and if they use another coin to get another one... Ooh, this might actually be... Yeah, this is juicy. That is the classic mistake. You don't put all fives on the board. They just used Scorch against me, but they uh, are gonna get something similar back. <laughs> there we go. Igni, I'm assuming, wins us the match, because I don't see them playing 19 points just out of hand. Yeah, uh, 22 points actually just out of hand. That was good. <laughs> just, just by a mistake there, because they should have put that on a different row. And they wouldn't have had that problem. So yeah, um, GG. So next up is Northern Realms. We got a bit lucky uh, against that Syndicate match there. So uh, let's see if we can't fare a bit better here. So if this is mages, then our deck should be ideally set up against this archetype. So let's get rid again of the same old culprits, Orcalon Sentinel and Maddock. So we always have uh, those cards. So there's always four options that you can mulligan. So the Orcalon Sentinels, Aloran and Maddock. Those do not need to be in your hand. And again, you can also use Vanadine to get rid of them. Now, opponent starts with what is most likely yeah, a student. A student, that's always the, uh, the same old, same old. So I'm going to try and be extremely aggressive here because I do not want students alive in this match. Students need to be killed as soon as possible. So if you're able to use a precision strike, on that first student and then just nuke it with a Dimeridium Bomb. And we got Maddock in return, so if there's a Banhart student incoming, then we can easily take that out as well. So our opponent just put a card from their deck in hand. And it is a Defender, but we do have an option to get rid of a Defender there. So let's just put the, um, the Elf down first, the Elven Swordmaster, because of course with the uh, Dryhead Sappers we can get rid of that Defender status. And then we get Letitia Charbonneau, that definitely needs to die. So we're going to be purifying the... Um, hmm. We're going to hit the Volunteer and then purify the Defender away. There we go. So there's a few ways we can actually get rid of Letitia now. Um, either we completely go all in on our leader ability, which is definitely an option. Or we just use the, um, the Haze to get rid of it. Um, although that will not be enough. I think leader ability might be the way here. Um, leader ability with the Ruviel. So hit on the Tisha Charbonneau. Hit on um, the Ruviel like this. So that wastes that one point. And then we can do just this and this already. And get our leader ability onto the Tisha Charbonneau. So she dies. There we go. And now we got the ban art student, so again, we uh, have a lot of tools available to us now. So I am gonna hit the ban art student with the elven swordmaster tick. Our Tusa student can go up to six, um, but I can get rid of it whenever I want to. So let's just use Maddock now and then use the cat witcher to also hit the, hmm, the back of the front row. The front row. There we go. So that just doesn't kill the student. Okay, fair enough. And then we get another Banard student, so they are coming in quicker and quicker now. Um, but I'm gonna put down more Cat Witchers. I'll do... I should probably get rid of that back student now. So this one is at three, so I need to get rid of it right now. And we get Maddock on the back row. But next up we'll have uh, Beefed Up with... Oh, there we go, we get a... We get a forfeit on mages, yeah, suck it. So one more test and we're facing off against an exact mirror. Even the, the leader skin is, is is the exact same. Well, the board actually looks pretty cool. 
Um, but again, as always, we're going to get rid of Elegan and the Brooklyn Sentinel. And then, of course, Mad Oak. And we also have Vanadane as a backup. We don't have the scenario card just yet. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful. But for now, this is looking pretty good. And we start, so um, I was kind of tuned out there for a second. I thought the our opponent was starting, but I can actually put down the uh, yeah the Stolblot on a Sentry first, and put down a few uh, and shade the Unshade Saber and just use these quite on Neophyte on top of that. There we go, a good start, but probably that uh, Sentry is gonna die in a minute. And there we go, we get hit at least once, and then we're gonna get hit by a bomb, so it is also a mad oak deck. So uh, that's why we always have a Northern Wind bomb in hand as well, so we can get rid of mad oaks immediately. And now we get the Whisperer of Dolblatana. Interesting choice. Could put down a Cat Witcher now already, it seems a bit of a waste to use the Dancing Star on that. So let's put a Cat Witcher down and let's move it down to the bottom. I'm keeping the Neophytes just in case one of our Elves will drop down to a lower point than uh, just two points. That's a, a fancy name, but yeah, the uh, spell that duplicates that uh, card there, I could have removed it. Um, but again, it's not super crucial. So let's use let's use Madoc now. Um, should have probably done that first, but then let's use the Dancing Star on the active Whisperer. And I feel like our opponent is gonna pass anyway. Oh, they are not making a bomb. Um, but with that, I can actually purify. Um, yeah, I can purify that Cat Witcher, so that's not a problem at all. I don't really care about those four turns of bleeding. Okay, we get the Elven Seer now, which means that we can definitely use Madoc and then use the Red Haze um, to get rid of the Elven Seer, just to take out basically everything that our opponent wants to try out. I should have probably used the uh, Neophytes now just to get a little bit more points. Our opponent is taking their time, but they'll have to make a decision soon. So either it's going to be a pass or not. And there we go, there's the pass, so uh, that was exactly what I was hoping for. So that also means that our opponent didn't really have the means to get rid of our Mad Hawk, which is interesting to say the least. So we still have a use for bombs, but if all else fails we can just keep mulliganing since we have Vanadine in hand. So I'm gonna use all my mulligans here so I can get rid of the bomb and then get rid of the Brooklyn Sentinel because I really want to try and get the scenario card here, but I don't have it just yet. If I had the scenario card, I would have been able to push right now. This seems a bit tricky. Well, that thing could get us a lot of extra dead eyes, though. What else do we have here? Gazgals as well. No, let's just let's just end it there. I do want to go into a longer round against this precision strike deck. We're gonna lose a few units anyway. And there's the mushy truffle. I haven't seen. I mean, there's a lot of. Decks that just run Mushy Truffle these days, it's it's still super overpowered, even with the provision nerf that I got. Every single deck just runs the card, and it's ridiculous. I try to avoid it as much as possible, but yeah, as you can see, there we go, it's an area card. Um, it uh, just keeps popping up. Two Dimeridium Bombs, that seems like a bit much. We get a Northern Wind Bomb, okay. Two Bombs, so I think that's probably a good target for uh, Vanadine to get rid of. And we get another start with the Whisperer. Well, then I can just use another bomb, I suppose. There we go. Getting Madoc on the field immediately. And then I think I'm gonna, just gonna come out with the um, scenario card. Although there is an uh, a possibility that our opponent will just Coralty it. Since it has been Coralty every single time that I wanted to use it in this game. But there we go. Remember to whom you speak. Making a bomb, killing... Madoc, and that was the only special card still left in their deck. Okay. Well, the only there there weren't any double um, cards left in their deck. I'll, I should put it that way. And there we go, Karate Heatwave. Ah, oh, this game gets really boring sometimes if you see stuff like that happening. Um, I don't need the Elven Sword Master. I'm gonna get rid of that in a minute. Um, I might actually just do it now. I do want to be careful to not lose Van Adeen here. Because um, Van Adeen is going to give us a lot of extra units. So Van Adeen in the front. 
and then get rid of Northern Wind. Or just the Elven Swordmaster, maybe. Because Northern Wind is still 7 points, Elven Swordmaster will probably not be, and I don't want to over um, extend with the amount of waylays in my hand here, so one will be enough. And then we get uh, a Bountiful Harvest, which was kind of weird, but not that much of a problem, I suppose. Probably better to use waylay now, although this card, of course, can be... I don't know if that actually regains that counter if it goes back into the, the graveyard. So if I use waylay now, I get double... Does that actually get... Oh, that gets that counter again. That is interesting. I didn't know that I kept going. I thought that was just a 5-point boost and you get the tree body back out of it again. But yeah, still, it was a better option, so I don't really mind. Um, I do need to be careful because I still have Geralt Igni, so I don't want to destroy too much of my opponent's cards. And then we get a Dimeridium Bomb on our Vernal Seals Commando, but things are looking on the up and up here. They're looking pretty good. Um, I could use the Northern Wind Bomb. Is Vanadane actually survived, which is re really striking. Um, is there something I need to kill with Northern Wind? There might actually be. The problem is there's not really good targets otherwise. I can use Vinociel now on the front row. Wait, what? I mean... Okay, okay fair enough. That's bullshit that that didn't hit Simlos there, because the, the, the unit's on the both, on both ends of the row. It doesn't matter that there's a scenario card there, uh, an, an, an artifact there. That really shouldn't matter. Hmm, I can actually just use the Cat Witcher now and only use two hits of Precision Strike on the Whisperer there, but it seems like our opponent really has a bad hand. So there we go, Cat Witcher taking out the Whisperer. I have another bomb and I feel like Igni might actually be uh, bricked here. Gonna have to see in a minute, but the sources of Dol Blatana are also in the same row. Um, I'm gonna use Vernociel in the, the the swarm sense of the the ability. Um, so now our Cat Witcher does two damage, and we get Elegan. So yeah, our swarm is doing pretty well. We get an Orb of Insight on the Sorceress, which means that yeah, there the um, yeah the the fancy name thing is. I don't know why you would leave that alive. I mean, so now I can Northern Wind. <laughs> Northern Wind, getting Madoc out, Precision Strike, and then use the two damage from the Sentinel on the Sorceress, and there we go. They forfeited. Their hand must have been really bad at the end there, which makes me wonder, because there's only seven cards in their deck, so they must have really burned most of their good cards early. So there we go, two forfeits with this deck. That was uh, very interesting, but I think that says it all. It's a really, really powerful against engine heavy decks um, which is why we had that forfeit against the mages specifically if you manage to be very precise with your hits then you should be able to kill every single mage that comes on the board aside from when they start boosting them really high i had some trouble with one of those um, in the past but the way we face them now with the lack of extra boosting you see what the effect is of our uh, precision striking and bombs it's just it's mad striking all around. So this was the Mad Striker Squirrels deck. And with that, I'm going to end this episode here. So uh, again, the biggest tips I can give you is, of course, the mulligan advice. You've heard that. Sentinels, um, Eleren, and Madoc needs to be mulliganed. Other than that, you just need to keep the pressure up. So hitting your opponent with one precision strike is usually enough to kill something with a bomb. Getting Madoc on the field, which is more damage for the next turn. And that just keeps on going. And then in the second round, or even in the first round, if you really want to push, you just go all out on your Elven Swarm, which is a very, very juicy combo. So uh, that's it for this deck guide, the uh, Match Striker Elves. Let me know what you think about this deck in the comment section down below. If you have any tips to improve it, surely let me know. And uh, yeah, we can just keep that discussion going on there. So thank you enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentage, where we will still be going on with Trovinut's Mont of Memes. So uh, thank you again for watching. Goodbye and stay nutty.